Hi, welcome to this new video of the Ant Lab. Today's project is yet another mini programmable keypad. Yet another because the web is full of similar projects. We want to build a keypad because it could be useful for various tasks. For example, to control OBS during the live streams, to simplify the video editing, and also to speed up the editing with various CAD. As usual, our small projects are sponsored by PCBWay. Give us some seconds to say thanks to PCBWay that allows us to keep alive our big project. Our big projects. Intro and we start. For this project, we set some specific goals and functionalities. We wanted a low-cost solution with a small number of components. We wanted to assign to every key a combination of characters or shortcuts. And we wanted to have some presets for different applications, selectable directly from the keypad itself. We wanted to have one programmable LED for each key and we wanted to make the prototype with the end. Looking at the first design, we realized that we needed to split the board in two parts, because the whole area of the PCB was larger than the maximum working area of the end. So, we divided the layout in two boards, a controller board and a keypad board. In the controller board, we inserted two push buttons and one OLED display to select the presets an Arduino Pro Micro as the main controller and a reset button. Moreover, there are two pin sockets, one to connect a rotary encoder and another to connect a keypad. Talking about the keypad board, we chose to make a PCB instead of solder flying wires to the components because we think the PCB is a better solution. In the keypad board, we placed 8 mechanical keys similar to Sherry MX, one LED for each key and 6 MOS to drive the LEDs. Additionally, we inserted one anti-ghosting diode uh, for each key to avoid the ghosting effect. If you want to know more about uh, the ghosting effect, we leave some information in the description. The layout of these two boards is quite simple, but we use a smart trick to avoid milling a double-sided board for the prototype. All the traces that are on the opposite side of the machined face are straight lines, without corners. In this way, these traces can be easily replaced with wires. Another precaution in the design was to place the components in such a way that they could be soldered on the middle side of the board. For example, the reset button is not an SMD like the others but a two-hole component for this reason. After the design phase, the funny part started.
after the PCB prototype was milled, we mounted all the components to test the keypad. And we soon realized that there was an evident mistake. The orientation of the keys was upside down. So, the backlight LED was not visible. Once again, the prototype helped us uh, correct a mistake and saved us a lot of time. As a consequence, we modified the layout and sent the Gerber to PCBWay for the production. In the meanwhile, we developed a draft of the firmware that is needed for the minimal functionality of the keypad. Every layout modification should be tested before sending the board to production. In this case, the modification was quite simple and we were quite confident about the results. So, we didn't mill a second prototype and we sent the board to PCB Way. Finally, we received the red flaming boards from PCB Way. As you may observe, the quality of production was pretty good. So, if you want to produce your own PCB, we ugly suggest PCB Way. With the PCBs, we soldered all the components and we were ready to test the programmable keypad. In this short video, there are some phases of the soldering of the keypad board. This was extracted from my live stream on Twitch of our Italian channel, that you can find in the description. On Twitch, we propose streaming of our activities which allow music as a background. Nothing to the money. The firmware is still a draft, but at least there is a minimal set of functionalities. The selection of the preset is already integrated and seems to work. Here is an example of usage of the keypad with Eagle. We use the keys preloaded with the shortcuts that we use more often in this card. The next step for this project is to design a structure to hold the PCB and choose the position of the rotary encoder. We will show the final result of this project in a future video and we will upload all the related material uh, online. Tell us if you like this kind of project and if you ever built or try to build your own keypad. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Ciao! Ciao.